Hello, Namaste, very good evening and welcome to Chitti Media. You're watching another episode of Vaishali Dialogue. A very controversial bill was passed by the government of Karnataka, which aims to stop forceful and coercive conversions. Now, as expected, the political binaries have evolved and the church is up in arms against the government of Karnataka. And it's saying that a fascist state uh, in the Karnataka is trying to impose a certain kind of restriction on a particular religious minority. Now, of course, there are other people also who are uh, in support of the bill because this seems to have become a very big issue for the masses. Now, that is what we are here to discuss today and to get perspectives from Robert Rosario G and Jerome Manto Ji. Namaste, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me for this conversation. I hope everything Namaste. is great. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much for inviting us on your show. First of all, Jerome Ji, you've been very active in the media and uh, have uh, been coming across a lot of your statements. Uh, without going into the details of the language of the bill, what are your opening op opening comments? My opening, uh, uh, my opening comments uh, is that uh, this is not at all a controversial bill. This is a policy which the government feels is required for the harmonious functioning of the society. Uh, it is a very convenient narrative that the, uh, that the vested interests uh, who are opposing this bill have been uh, propagating uh, across the country and across the globe. So absolutely there's nothing controversial and uh, there is nothing unconstitutional. I, I do not know if uh, these people who are uh, high in society, who are very learned, uh, who I'm sure have uh, also looked at the constitution of, the, of our country, it is well within the purview of the constitution, uh, which has given the right to the state to decide uh, if it wants to pass a bill. These are checks and balances which the government wishes to introduce. And uh, I am absolutely flabbergasted by the uproar of only one community, which makes me feel, and I'm sure makes everybody feel that they seem to have a vested interest in this, uh, in the passing of this bill. Right. This also seems, um... Uh, some sort of a Western interest is involved because they're clearly opposing because there is a real estate angle to it. I mean, that, that's not deniable at all because that comes under the scrutiny when uh, this is enacted. This is uh, not just the real estate. See, uh, 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 real estate is just one, one small piece of the whole pie. The larger agenda is to convert every human being on the face of the earth. They have succeeded every civilization. The only civilization, the strong civilization, which has stood its ground for a very long time is the Indian civilization, which is the Hindu society, because of its own innate character. And it is uh, these conversion manias who have a vested interest in taking control of our nation socially, religiously, politically, and economically are in the, in the fight to get hold of it. That's uh, my conclusion. Uh, that's my right. first part of the statement. On, Jirunji, uh, I'll get back to you uh, in a minute. But Robert Ji, uh, would you like to uh, share something as your opening uh, statements, please? Well, see, this uh, very religious conversion itself, on the face of it, it's a very, very dangerous uh, problem facing this country, not today, for ages. You know, political parties have, you know, um, now, now they have risen from the deep sleep, but it is a long, long pending problem. And uh, religious conversion is not only you are changing the religion, you are changing your allegiance to the very land that you live in. That, that is more dangerous. It is not only Matantaran, it is also Rashtrantaran. Your mindset, you, the moment you become a Christian, automatically you start loving, you know, the so-called Christian nations like America, England, Europe, you know, and your allegiance to the motherland goes down. That is a more serious problem. And uh, strangely, our political parties have not uh, never bothered. Some parties don't want to do it because they are, you know, after all, they are the handmaids of the church itself. Some parties are making some noise here and there. 
sometimes they talk about it then they forget when the election come they bring in the issue maybe for electoral gains okay let them take electrical uh, electoral gain but at the same time do the work on the ground that was not forthcoming now we hear some noise that some bill is coming not only hearing but they have introduced also in one of the houses it is already passed so my con concern throughout has been and i'm very consistently saying we need will and not the bill if the government has the will a able administrator can solve any problem any dam problem if he has the will there is no shortage of uh, legislation or law if there is no will any amount of bills you bring in can but they are not going to be effective on the ground uh, robert ji may we have your opening comments please before we uh, proceed ahead Uh, so this religion religious conversion is a long pending problem faced faced by this country for a long long time it's a very serious and very complex uh, issue which is not only bothering the nation but uh, even it is affecting our uh, you know foreign relations but no party seem to have bothered about it so far some parties uh, don't want to bother because they are handmade of the church again some party wanted to do something but uh, couldn't do or they had not the maybe some problem why what problem they were facing in uh, taking up upon this issue i don't know only during elections they were talking something about it the first time it has come again to the fore you know it's a core issue now it's in the public uh, discourse so how to deal with the with the with this situation okay. my opinion has been throughout you need will and not the bill if you have the will you can you can solve any problem in this country because there are enough number of laws you right. can solve the problem if you don't have the will you begin a bill or uh, a 10 bills you bring it's not going to work because the very bureaucracy who implements the bill will work by its own way we have seen how the bureaucracy works in this country if the top yeah. person in the government top administrator has the control and uh, ability to make the system work then only he can uh, uh, get the results right so here also i have my own uh, i on say reservations uh, reservations right. bill okay i can comment about the bill i can say wow wow bill is good but <laughs> ultimately end of the day how it effective it will be right. unless it is effective so mm. it's uh, not going to be of any use and this uh, religious conversion problem is not just a religious problem it is also a political problem it is mm. also a psychological problem it is also a problem that is uh, bothering the unity and integrity of the nation <coughs> why i am saying so unity and integrity of the nation is because just by religious conversion the person doesn't become only change of religion but his uh, you know allegiance to the very land changes right his allegiance to the constitution of this country his uh, allegiance to the very civilizational values of this country change so it is not only matantaran it is also rashtrantaran so this is a very serious right. issue unless the political parties understand the seriousness of this to the depth of it it's not going to achieve much this is what i'm right my worry is uh, thank you so much for that jerome ji uh, the debate was about implementation in karnataka now that it's been implemented clearly the bill is already seeing a lot of challenges in the sense that if there is an election next year and if the bjp were to be booted out of power and if there is a different government i think the congress has also made remarks that they are willing to uh, you know sort of retract the entire act itself uh, should they come to power no, already dk shukman has already come out now in the open statement he said we are going to reverse all this right so what is the future of the bill in that sense like at some point there is going to be a government change if not for the next elections the elections after so uh, so this is more of a, in fact uh, uh, my my stand has been the anti conversion law or the religious freedom law which the states have been uh, in, uh, have introduced in uh, in uh, whether it's uh, orissa or in karnataka uh, they lack teeth okay because uh, i always term these bills as toothless tiger because uh, it has really not served the purpose eight states have already implemented this bill right. has there been any conviction has there been any reduction i term these bills including the bill in karnataka as just a face wash it right. is nothing but a face wash just to appease certain communities there is no pure will uh, if uh, this nation 
wants to rescue itself from the clutches of the West, from the clutches of these missionaries who have allegiance to the West, then the nation needs to think of a national policy. Right. The, the, the constitution of our country, which uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar had introduced, very clearly said that this is not cast in stone. As time progresses, as time evolves, it has to be amended. Uh, we have close to 105 plus amendments in the in the last uh, since independence since it's been implemented. So there is definitely a need. I've been uh, championing the cause that the right to religion needs to be relooked. Pre practice, profess, and propagate are contrary to the Indian way of life. Propagate especially does not fall in line with the inclusive theory of our nation. In fact, if you look at all the backlashes, uh, everybody who's been talking uh, on the anti-conversion law or the religious freedom law, they are singing only one song. And that song is that the constitution of this country gives us the freedom to propagate, right. which is a direct uh, uh, relation to what the constitution says. And in fact, the right to religion and the propagate and all these dramas, what the states are doing are nothing but contradictions and hypocrisy. Right. So if this nation is really serious about it, then they need to look at a national policy so is what my... You're saying uh, that, you know, it may be a toothless tiger, uh, the bill, even in Karnataka. Uh, but I, I think uh, Archbishop Peter Machado made a statement saying that, you know, he compared the other bills uh, passed in several other states. And he said that the rules are much more stringent. The punishment is stringent in case of Karnataka and that no person deserves to be in jail for so many years just because he's converted somebody. Uh, I doubt the veracity uh, of the bill because end of the day, a uh, 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 hundred bills can be passed, but where is the will? Is there a will? Because uh, uh, in all my uh, uh, experiences uh, with the society, in the society, wherever this conversion happening, and I being a Christian, a Roman Catholic, having spent enough time with different churches, with different denomination churches who are indulging in hardcore conversion, what I understand is this, it will not match. Whatever uh, the policies the government says, it may put 101 uh, stringent rules, but if there is no mechanism or if there is no political will uh, mm -hmm. in implementing it and taking people to task, then it is only called lip service. So uh, I, I, though I know in principle, maybe I would agree, but then I, uh, I don't believe in this bill. Right. Uh, Robert G., the church is also preparing for a very big legal battle uh, to uh, revoke the bill. So do you think there will be any resounding amount of support from the judiciary for this? No, it was uh, not surprising at all for me. Hmm. Because uh, you know, the church will not uh, leave any stone unturned to challenge this bill in the highest court of this land. And in, uh, yes, I have my own, uh, you know, after uh, studying the law to some extent, uh, I can understand, yes, court may rule in its favor because the very Article 25 comes on the way. Very Article 25 of the Constitution gives you so much of, you know, ample powers, you know, so much sweeping powers to the church to do anything and everything. No, no, they may say this is a hurdle in practicing and professing the religion. So there is a likelihood that the, the, the FX court may consider it as a ultra virus of the Constitution. Ultra virus of uh, Article 25 of the Constitution, in all probability, is possible. Right. So far, it may not have happened uh, in other states, but in Karnataka, you know, Karnataka is a different case, you know, altogether. And more than Karnataka, it is Mangalore is a more different case because Mangalore is the capital, capital of Indian Catholic Church. You know, the number of bishops that <laughs> this place has produced, it's a world record. And not even Christian countries have uh, produced that many bishops from one uh, small area. So, you know, the headquarters is, in, uh, is being challenged now. So that's yeah. the beauty, you know. Uh, for us, the Delhi is not the headquarter, neither Mumbai, it's a Mangalore, the coastal Karnataka. There also seems to be a media trial, you know, because all of a sudden there have been reports of rising attacks against the Christian community, uh, especially in Karnataka when at, at the time when the bill is being passed. Media trial is always there when it was not there. 
Right. The church, see, church has many multi-pronged agenda or multi-pronged strategy. And one of the strategies is media trial that we have seen for a very long, long time. The media trial is one, fake narrative is another, fake persecution is another, fake uh, church attack is another. So, you know, this multi, and, uh, you know, this global law, I want to make it very, very specific. We always talk about Goebbels law. When Joseph Goebel coined one law, if you repeat a lie a hundred times, it becomes a truth. It is yeah. not Gobel. Not even his father was born. Even his father was born. Church has practiced it for a for thousand years. And Gobel has just given a definition to this. You know, he is the one who defined such a thing. Repeating lie hundred times, it can become truth. Whereas church has practiced it successfully over hundreds and thousands of years. Right. And uh, Jaramji, you know, one of the other na narratives... Yeah, Jaramji, I, I would want to... So I'm sorry to interrupt, but I would want to speak on the, the same question you had asked, Robert. Sure. Okay. See, uh, uh, if I uh, if you look at uh, the question what you asked, you said uh, it is going to be challenged in the court. Yes. Uh, this is absolutely ridiculous uh, compared to the Christian way of life because if you look at the Bible, uh, if you look at the way, uh, the life of Jesus or the life of uh, Jesus' parents, it's absolutely contradictory. Jesus' parents, who is Mary and Joseph, they never challenged the court when there was a, a policy of the government where the Roman Empire had asked for a census to be conducted mm -hmm. and Mary was pregnant and late pregnant and then she was about to deliver, but then she traveled. She and Joseph traveled miles away apart. Uh, I guess it's around three to five days they traveled for a mere census. Okay, And at that time, uh, the Romans were... Uh, uh, were the rulers and uh, Mary and jo Mary, Joseph, Jesus were Jews and uh, they were under the Roman rule. When the Romans asked uh, for a census, they never blinked an eye. So this is absolutely hypocrisy, uh, a mm -hmm. direct uh, contradiction of what the Bible says. Absolutely, it's another insult to the Jesus. Second thing, one more, uh, one more such instance I would wish to quote for uh, all those Christians who are watching this program, uh, Jesus was asked uh, during his time, uh, the, wouldn't you pay the taxes? Jesus did not I blink an eye. He said, what belongs to Caesar, let it be paid to Caesar. And Jesus obliged paying the taxes. Look at what the church is doing today. Such a ridiculous thing. I, uh, my, <laughs> it appears that uh, Jesus needs to be rescued from the evil clutches of the church. Absolutely, they made Jesus into a brand and they are actually, by, by all these actions, they are not insulting themselves, they are insulting Jesus. This is right. what everybody needs to know who want to take this up at a legal way, at a, on a legal challenge. You are doing more damage to the whole Christian philosophy. You are doing more damage to the Christians. You are actually insulting yourself by getting into such kind of a dirty attitude, which is absolutely against the Bible. Right. And one more narrative which is uh, becoming prominent these days, uh, Jerumji, is that uh, there is a bifurcation of, the, of, of a sense of unity in India itself, in the sense that uh, the media is telling that South India was always more secular uh, compared to the North. And now look at Karnataka, what is happening with the BJP in power. Uh, and they also draw comparisons with uh, uh, Karavadi Karnataka, which is the coastal Karnataka region, saying that, you know, it's the bastion of uh, Hindu fundamentalism. Now, this is fake narrative. That's what I am telling. See, church is the mastermind in fake narrative. It has practiced fake narrative for thousand years successfully. And Gobel coined it. You know, now we know it as a Gobel's law. It is the actually church's law. Right. What it has practiced very, very successfully. You know, we say, no, Yellininda, uh, Yellininda betta From a from mole, you make a mountain. Right. There is a saying. So you need a mole to make a mountain. But I would say church doesn't even need a mole. Even without a mole, it can make a mountain. Right. You know, I can give you enough number of examples. So this right. is the capacity of the church. And, uh, making fake narratives. Two other things, Jeremji, did you want to comment on that? No, I did, but I think uh, Robert has uh, substantiated what I wanted to say. Uh, right. This is nothing but the machinery, the well-oiled machinery of the fake narrative. They are hand in glove with 
uh, certain media houses, if you look at it, uh, the, the very bill which was planned in Karnataka, two and a half months back, the church seemed to have smelt the dead rat. They started, I, I was actually sensing there's something coming up because they suddenly started meeting the chief minister. There was in there were enough delegations meeting. Uh, so I knew there is something cooking. Uh, much before, though I've been active uh, on understanding uh, the whole conversion business and how uh, the church has been behaving, uh, I, I didn't really realize until uh, the bill actually came out uh, and uh, there were talks about it. Right. So this is a, a, a clear a machinery which is well informed, uh, way ahead in terms of uh, information gathering, way ahead in terms of strategy, way ahead in terms of how plotting, how to plot right. the whole uh, scenario. Right. It, it's because it's because of its infiltration. Church has infiltration in every single institution of this country. That's why it could understand, it could know well in advance what is happening in future. Right. And uh, you see, this law is supposed to equally apply to all religions and all faiths. Uh, but it seems that the Hindu community and even Muslims to a very large extent and other you know, faiths are not really protesting. Uh, but in the church's defense, what they're saying is that the law is tilted against Christianity in particular and that it is biased towards uh, Hinduism for that matter. See, uh, if you have uh, if you have ten members and there is one criminal, and if there is a law that is going to come on on a criminal case on a on a crime, who is the person who is going to be most agitated out of the ten? Right. The one who will be on a scanner is the one who will be agitated. So uh, the very fact that uh, one certain one community has has been um, um, uh, crying wolf all this while saying that minorities are in danger itself is a clear exhibition as to what who has a vested interest right. see because the if you, even if you look at the bill the bill does not say anything about which religion why uh, aren't there parsis in this country i will not talk about jains or buddhists because their origin is in india why parsis are not from india right. why are they not speaking about the bill right um, Absolutely. So, so they have a vested interest, very clear vested interest, and they have exhibited very, very candlessly. Right. Now, I, I'm going to uh, put across a few concerns that has been raised by the uh, church. And um, if you could please answer them, I think that will answer a lot of questions as well. Robert, you, what the church also says is that this particular act makes it very difficult for people who are voluntarily willing to convert without any coercion. No, how will it? Because of the procedural complexities. Okay, you, you have to uh, face certain procedures because even marriage is not an easy job, you know. <laughs> you, you can't go on, you can't go on marrying 10 people. There is a procedure laid down. So if the government restricts, you know, they make some procedures to avoid multiple, uh, you know, polygamy. Can you call right. it this is a hurdle on the very institution of marriage? Right. So very intent is to, you know, <laughs> make it effective. And uh, Father P uh, Peter Machado also said that the act criminalizes, and uh, I'm quoting him verbatim, criminalizes preaching the gospel and uh, propagating one's religion. But the act never even mentions the word gospel anywhere. So again, again, this is fake narrative. But here, one thing I want to say, tell you uh, in answer to Peter Machado, he is an expert in religion. Okay, somebody wants to approach him for voluntarily for converting. Mm -hmm. So my, I would like to give an example here. See, we have a big doctor who had, you know, foreign educated and expert in many things, comes to our village. What he's supposed to do? He has to open a clinic and sit in his clinic. Whoever has any problem will walk into his clinic, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, instead of that, if he carries a briefcase and goes to door to door knocking, do you have any headache? Do you have any stomach ache? Do you have any problem? What will the people call? This man has gone crazy. Right. He's not a doctor, he must be something wrong with this man. So similarly, why do the church want to go door to door campaigning? This is what we, uh, Peter Machado is saying, no, uh, professing. Why do you want to profess? Whoever wants to fall in love with Jesus, want to follow Jesus, will come to you. You are the expert. You sit in your clinic and the patient will walk into your clinic. Right. Why, why the hell you want to go to the streets and uh, say, I am the doctor? You right bring up a very important point. And Jeromji, uh, one other point uh, that the Archbishop brought up is that uh, suppose, uh, suppose a Christian wants to become a Hindu, then you're only creating more hurdles and will the law apply equally uh, to you know these people? 
No, uh, in fact, uh, I was uh, uh, listening to one of the one of the uh, uh, Catholic priests who was saying that uh, if a person wants to leave Christianity uh, and then go back to his original uh, religion, that it, it does not cover into this bill. Okay, mm -hmm. let me give you an example. The example is very simple. If you sell a product and the product is defunct, it does not work. Uh, so, does it mean that I can I have to retain that product? Right. Similarly, if somebody feels that they've been fooled, they've been lured, they've been forced, and if they find that they do not want to stay back in the religion, and they'll be more than happy going back in the same or to the religion of, of their own, right. why should that not be a freedom? Because uh, if uh, I, I guess it's every human's uh, freedom to decide to opt for something, right? right? If they have opted for something for whatever reason it is, either uh, by some, somebody having convinced them, somebody having confused them, somebody having conned them, then if the person comes to a realization that he's been convinced, he's been confused, he's been conned, then I think he has all the freedom to go back to uh, his own uh, religion. Right. Does it, that, so uh, in relation to a product, that doesn't mean that he is a consumer. Please understand a consumer is one who has the product with you. If the consumer returns the product back to you, he is no more your consumer. I think uh, so. That's that's a kind of relationship what uh, I'm trying to draw so for better understanding, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which uh, you know it's so uh, evident because it says that I have converted somebody and I do not want that person to go back to uh, his original religion. It could be somebody has actually enlightened them, saying that mm -hmm. you've been uh, confused, you've been con con. Right. You know, gentlemen, unfortunately, uh, due to paucity of time, we'll have to shorten this conversation. But I'll leave you with one last question, which I think both of you can answer, is that uh, finally what the church is emphasizing time and again is that there is no proof of first conversion, maybe isolated incidents here and there, which the police can take care of. And this is also not getting reflected in the demographics. What would your response be? Uh, should we begin with Robert G? Not reflecting the demography is because of uh, you know a few reasons. There is something like crypto Christians. Right. See now we are a you know uh, willingly or unwillingly we are a caste based society. Right. So there are reservations. There are you know government is not treating everybody equal. The Brahmin what facility Brahmin is not getting, a Dalit is getting. So these facilities are available for a Hindu. Right. When you become a Christian, it is not available. A Dalit uh, Hindu converting Christianity loses all the facilities. The church is very much aware of it. So church itself advises, don't on record, don't change the religion. On record, be a Hindu, but be a practicing uh, Christian. Right. So so enjoy the facilities. So if you if you go by that, go to that depth and uh, study. I think the conversion should be right. something more than eight percent or ten percent. Especially in the case of Goa, it's very interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, became Christians during the Inquisitions, but were called crypto Hindus. And this is a term that is used by Christian scholars, even academic scholars, even today. So when it is true in this case, why can't it be true in the other case as well? Right, uh, Jerome ji? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is uh, exactly so. So it does not fit the narrative. As of now, it does not fit the narrative. That's the reason why they are talking about it. But right. uh, if you look at uh, uh, what Robert said, absolutely crypto Christians, uh, the data is not uh, correct because uh, uh, I'm sure many of you would have read that article of uh, one of uh, a popular Christian cheerleader who goes to the US and cries, sheds uh, crocodile tears. He himself has, uh, 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 has written an article which uh, clearly says that he, uh, the, the population of uh, Christians has increased uh, uh, enormously, it has already gone to double digits in several states. Uh, in states like uh, in the Northeast, uh, uh, the Hindus are in minority. Right. So uh, the, there is adequate, uh, there is not enough data integration that has happened. Now right. the technology has moved ahead. Uh, there is data being collected in terms of the Aadhaar card, in terms of the PAN card. I think it is important that the government uh, uh, integrate all this data. And uh, as a closing remark, I wish to bring to uh, your notice that this very exercise of what the government is doing is actually to collect the list of people who are willing right. to uh, 
to convert. The government is not objecting to convert. It says you can convert, but we need to know who are those people converting right. and the names and the details. So why are uh, these are checks and balance? See, these are checks and balances which the government wishes to uh, implement, even if there is an assumption. Let us understand, even if there is an assumption, for example, in the banking sector, if the if the government, if the state, if the administration feels that there is some kind of a malpractice, even if it assumes there is some kind of a malpractice, it is its freedom to implement these checks and balances, right? You so the, right. suddenly the banking sector cannot say you cannot implement it. Likewise, there are several such instances which needs to be brought to mainstream, and there needs to be a process in place. The government is saying, let's put a process in place. And why are they objecting it? Because it appears that the uh, the, the truth will be out very soon. Right. Uh, Robert G, can we have your closing remarks and then we'll end the session? Yeah, closing remarks. Uh, see, government, um, my call to the men in government, be, be good administrators, then good campaigners. Learn to be good administrators, implement the law whatever is existing first then you think about no laws uh, new new bills and new law, laws so put able administrators in place make it effectively make it effective before things go out of hand right thank you so much gentlemen for joining me will the political will sustain in spite of the pressure from uh, the catholic church and uh, several other institutions and what will be the future of this particular uh, act uh, only time can tell us until then please do stay tuned to chiti we'll be bringing in more updates on this particular topic okay thank you thank you so much please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel for our other social media links more content and to support our work please visit citti.net धन्यवाद नमस्कार